Well, good morning, Sean Baxter. There you are. And what a wonderful day. The sun's streaming through the windows. You're standing in the middle of the Never Never Gin, uh, Never Never Distilling Company, Gin Distillery. I mean, that must be the dream as the co-founder of Never Never Distilling Company, producing amazing gins. What better than that could your day be? It's it's a John. It's a pretty special uh, place uh, in the world, actually. Um, considering we started off in sixteen square meters in the back of a shed uh, oh, wow. in Port Adelaide, which was probably what your viewers can see. Really, that's about yeah. sixteen square meters, uh, yeah. and now it's a it's a much much uh, more spacious uh, production floor. I have to admit, mm. but uh, I'll I'll take on a little tour outside in a second. But McLaren Vale is an incredible part of the world to produce. Mm. Uh, we always really wanted to uh, be in this location, so much so that. When we first started off, we even put a picture of McLaren Vale on our label, even mm. though we were, uh, in a, as I said, in a shed uh, in Royal Park. So it was kind of aspirational yeah. in a way, and it kind of meant that we had to uh, end up in a place like this. <laughs> well, we're going to produce a series of about five little vignettes, kicking off with this one, okay? All about Never Never Gin and the distilling company and so on. Um, so let's start off, well, how did it all start? Was it a drunken evening one night with, with, <laughs> your, with your co-founder drinking some average gin and go, oh, we, we can do better than this, guys. Honestly, <laughs> this is rubbish. Let's do better. Tell me all about it. It was three friends, really, that we all had our own particular skill set. So I stepped from a background working in um, working with whiskey, actually, as a, as a brand ambassador. Mm. Um, George had a had a, a, a an incredible understanding of business and his and his financial background gave us the I guess the impetus to be able to kind of go no we can we can we can actually do this we we mm. we feel what we're confident that we can actually pull it off and Tim has a has a production background um so again from all of our various experiences we pulled our collective monies and we bought Wendy um Wendy <laughs> is a three hundred <laughs> liter pot still <laughs> can you and imagine that, saying that to, kind of, <laughs> did you say to your wife oh was, by the way I'm just popping down to Bunnings I'm going to buy a pot still yeah, it's definitely a weird, it was definitely a weird situation. And like the, the, the beautiful thing is, it's like when you're starting out, you don't have a, a particularly large amount of money to spend. Mm -hmm. It makes your options much easier because yeah. it's like, well, this is the one that we could afford. So that was the one that we bought. Um, wow. So we bought her at the end of 2016. Uh, and then we tried to find somewhere to put her. Usually when you start a distillery, you build a distillery. We mm -hmm. didn't do that. We bought a still and then we try to work out where we could put her. Um, we found a space at the back of Big Shed Brewing uh, yeah. out in the west of Adelaide, and we got to work uh, producing our gin, Triple Juniper Gin. Today, um, and I'll give you a quick under a quick mm. little turnaround, this is the, the latest one that's turned up. So this is oh, our wow. newest edition. Um, Wendy's only 300 litres. Uh, this still is 1,000. So this really represents the next, the next step, if you like, for, yeah. for Never Never Distilling Co. And, and does she have a name? Not yet. We're, we ha she hasn't actually had any spirit go through it yet. So um, on that day, we'll announce the name. But we've got mm -hmm. a few tickering out in the background of our, uh, of our heads. But as you can see, when we first started off our, mm -hmm. our business, being um, in Royal Park in Adelaide, sounds very leafy, it's not. It's basically a car park. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we, we never really anticipated potentially having such a spectacular outlook and um oh, wow. this is where this is where we end up today so visitors uh to mclaren vale um you know often love to come up to this hill because you really do get a sense of the entire region um right isn't from our one little hill spot isn't that amazing yeah so i didn't realize that you're open to the public as well as a distillery so people can come there do gin tastings you do food as Absolutely. well i presume we do. We've got an we've got an incredible little offer, uh, offering here in the field. It's basically three separate businesses that mm. all um, are working together to create this wonderful opportunity. So Chalk Hill Wines um, very uh, very generously invited us up to share their hill space. So we work alongside Chalk Hill Wines uh, and also Cucina de Strada, which is a, 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 a basically a little pizza operator. So it's okay. a, a, an amazing opportunity. Yeah. So okay. So these three guys, three of you in total, is it? That's correct. Okay. Myself. Tim yeah. and George. And George. Okay, so Sean, Tim and George got together. They convinced their wives to allow them to buy Wendy. Okay. And they, yes. they, they thought you were all having an affair with the same woman. Um, <laughs> and then you had this little space in this shed in Royal Park or whatever it's called in, uh, in Adelaide. So you then started producing gin. Correct. How would you yeah, do so that? We're... I mean, like, I mean, if I started in 10 years time, I wouldn't know how to produce gin. So tell me more. <laughs> 
we were really like we were really excited i guess by classic gin style we love the idea of of, of the way that people really resonate with with london dry and and that's what we wanted to create so we we started experimenting with uh, our smallest still nancy nancy was a 20 liter pot still which we used to create all of our earliest recipes um, and we started actually tinkering and working out what particular flavors that we'd like to work with and of course for us juniper was always going to be the most important ingredient mm. because to be a gin you need to have juniper and we mm. decided to use as much juniper as we could physically put into into mm. the still so by creating that really concentrated and really rich style of gin mm. it really separated us from everything else that's on the on the current market okay. and that's why we've been so successful mm. in such a short period so, of time so what's the juniper and what does juniper do to gin sure so Juniper is a really, really important part of the flavor profile. This is where we actually score all of our juniper. Okay. Um, what, what it actually creates, basically it's, um, it's basically the world's smallest pine cone. So ah, when, you, when you actually yes. open up juniper, you get this really um, incredible kind of resinous pine character. Mm. And that flavor for me um, is, is absolutely quintessential to, to creating a really perfect gin. Yeah. Interestingly, there's also a science behind it. Uh, the, the flavors that you'll find in juniper, alpha pinene, work really well with the flavors of tonic water, which is quinine. They actually have a very similar, yeah. similar chemical composition. So when they go together, they create this wonderful sort of um, different flavor. Uh, they create an aggregate flavor. And, and that's what juniper is able to do in a, in a great gin. That's why a gin and tonic is so classic and is the quintessential pairing when it comes to gin. Well, look, I think that's an amazing introduction. I mean, um, we're going to be, as I say, going to be doing five of these. OK, so there we've kicked off now. We've seen your amazing location in South Australia there. We've heard a little bit about Juniper. We've heard about the gin and so on. So let's look forward to the next one where I'd like you to tell me a bit about the history of gin, because it's very much a sort of queen mother type drink, isn't it? Because she used to love a gin tea and it's very much absolutely as it's Ascot. And, you know, uh, hang on, I've got my glass here. So uh, let's have a gin and tea. You know? <laughs> so maybe in the next one you can tell me a bit about the history of gin and I'd leading into more about Never Never Gin and why, where it fits today. Because gin, as well as you know better than anybody, has really taken off. And how do you sell it? So thank you for your first introduction. And let's move My into pleasure. the next one in a couple of days. Would love to, John. Thank you.